169th contact. Sunday, March 28, 1982, 11:11 am. Billy says you come very late today. Quetzal says I was very busy because as always, I am forced to clarify things that would normally only fall under the responsibility of your group. Billy says then once again, I can lie and wait for unpleasant things. Quetzal says unfortunately, that will be so, because at other times, we now concern ourselves with thoughts of ending the contacts. Concerning this, Patar, Semiaza, myself and all others in relation to this met on the 7th of April to discuss this. But already now, it firmly stands that after the aforementioned date, I will only visit you once in the next time of at least six months. But maybe, it will finally be the last time. Billy says I've thought since last time that, nevertheless, much had changed for the better. Quetzal says that he's partially correct, but my precise inspections of the last few weeks have shown that the most basic things have changed only superficially or by pretend. Several group members practice great deceit in their deeds and thoughts and they are wrong with the other group members. They also act this way toward you because in front of your face, they are friendly and trusting, while behind your back, they talk exactly the opposite and insult you. But they also act this way among themselves and with the other group members. Along with this, very careless and duty unconscious mistakes are committed, which are extremely serious errors in terms of the statutes and regulations. Some even believe that they can have special rights because they reside in the center. So among other things, landscape and edifice disorders arise, even though the ordinal rules state that these should be strictly kept clean and in order. But the animosities of the group members among themselves, as well as the objecting to the actions of others, are also serious, even though the criticizing, in the same relationship, isn't better in one iota and, thus, exhibits the same errors. Unfortunately, is it still like this, as I discovered with the help of the control elements that many group members behave worse than a young children and adolescents. Nothing can be said of their adulthood even if they have to perform adult activities. So-called clap, as you call this, Gossiping among one another and about the other group members and snitching belong to the agenda, if I may use your words. This includes some of those who, hitherto, have never been named by us in particular because we thought that they would recognize their mistakes and fix them. But everything isn't the behavior of adults not even of earth people but it is the behavior of disobedient and duty unconscious life forms that don't even have the manner of children because children stand in their impoliteness and duty unawareness within the context of their learning, so gradually, they recognize their mistakes and fix them. But not so with the adults, who put on a better show in an ingenious manner, even though they think and act completely differently whereby they cannot recognize any mistakes nor fix these. But this is a deliberate deception that can never lead to the goals which we must expect for the fulfillment of the mission. In this way, neither our expectations nor our guidelines are fulfilled and neither are the rules, regulations, or statutes. For this reason, it is only right if we conclude our contacts because the whole ordeal shows no such future. But we also don't have time to wait much longer, just as this time also isn't at the disposal of the earth people anymore. The time now begins to hurry, while our hopes have faded that the group members will still find and go their right way in the foreseeable future. Billy says and I, like an idiot thought that everything could still find its right path. Quetzal says you have been deceived, just as we, by the external light. Billy says the only reason is because we agreed, with two hollow heads, that we will only consider the exterior. Quetzal says that is correct, and unfortunately, that was clearly wrong, as you even expressed at that time while considering this. I should have followed your advice. Billy says but I still think, nevertheless, that there had to be another way. Quetzal says unfortunately, the latest findings are too blatant. Billy says but still one last chance. Quetzal says we have given those over and over again and it was pointless. 
Billy says I know yet if you would, at least, simply interrupt the contacts for a certain time. Quetzal says we have already thought about that and we decided that one way or another, a six-month interruption will now follow. If until then, everything hasn't basically changed in the way that real and not just pretended changes appear for the better, then we won't announce ourselves to them for the period of 24 months. This, then, is a very long time for the fallible ones to reflect on things. But if this time isn't used in the way that all guidelines are obeyed to the last detail and little necessary changes of the individual group members are carried out then the contacts are to be regarded as being permanently terminated. Billy says and everything concerning the whole structure and safety of the group members, as well as the mission? And what about in general with the filming and photographing with your assistants? Quetzal says everything will be immediately set off and be prevented. And whether we ever deal with this again will only be proven if we can definitively determine whether the necessary changes in the individual group members took place or not. Billy says then all the filming and photographing is also back in the water for this year. Quetzal says that is, unfortunately, correct. And just in addition, I must, unfortunately, tell you that you, too, have occasionally violated the statutes and regulations, which were included in our decisions. Concerning Ferdinand and Ingrid, you violated your duty and permitted both that they could neglect performing their duties several times, and you have also practiced inappropriate forbearance and softness with other group members which could also be injurious to duty. But in particular, a heavy reproach is given to you with regard to Ingrid and Ferdinand, even though you have offered them an unusually large amount of time, to which I have also contributed, which I am ashamed to admit. I am also an accessory to the whole ordeal because I dedicated too much time to Ingrid before I recognized that she is truly the driving force behind the most frequent failures of Ferdinand. She exercises a dictatorial power over him by what means she forces him to do things that he otherwise wouldn't do, without which he would perform his duties. Lately, Ingrid now moves on a destructive course, which is as it seems she wants to reach her own goals by falsehoods and delusions. Because she has recognized that she has made too many mistakes in order for her actual, original destiny to be achieved, she now tries to force the old and outdated determinations to be fulfilled through fantasies and delusions. But in addition I heard every means even lies and intrigues, which lead to other machinations. Her imaginations relating to this even go so far that she is already at risk of becoming seriously ill, both mentally and physically, for which she has already done so much, and the first symptoms already appear. But this can never be a reason to neglect her duty to the group and its members and her duty to her husband and children, or even to make Ferdinand, slowly but surely, become a spouse by himself. About this, you should most urgently speak with her again. Billy says man, that's what I did many times. Quetzal says I know that, but this will be necessary at other times. Moreover, I now determine that it should be such that if Ingrid violates the obligations and statutes again, she will immediately be expelled from the core group. This means that she has to expect no more mercy in the future, over which I personally watch. So I'll decide on her expulsion, if I think it to be right. Billy says and Ferdinand? Quetzal says according to my present knowledge, he carries out his duties faithfully to the statutes and other rules, if he isn't under the spell of Ingrid. Thus, he has been considered by us as blameless since the time when he promised you and us that he'd perform his duty faithfully to the rules and regulations. Thus, he would have to load a triple offense upon himself against the regulations, in accordance with the statutes, before he would be considered fallible for removal from the group. We do not take into consideration his former mistakes, etc., which he committed before the time that we were thoroughly enlightened about him by you. We can, in every way and as you also do, always take into consideration that which appears from the time when the person became oriented over the factual truth and the necessary circumstances. Like you, we never take into consideration a past, 
special judgment because it can never have anything to do with new events after the necessary clarification. Billy says there, I am reassured. But now, Ingrid has let it be said, for example, that last Saturday, she became sick on the trip here. So she had to return home. Quetzal says this case from yesterday is known to me, and I can't let this be a valid excuse. For you, these concerns seem to be somewhat confused, which is why I am still concerned. Only you alone may and can understand the facts because you have enough experience. Billy says oh, I see, then all sorts of things have already been built psychologically, which have probably already brought themselves into effect physically. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says then everything is clear to me. Agapula told me that Ingrid has to focus so that we could check with Dr. Flachasman, etc. But this is now unnecessary, so this cannot be accepted as an excuse. Now this is clear to me. This also avoids the need for any apologies. But what about now with the meditation circle? Will this fall flat with the absence of Ingrid? Quetzal says even if we terminate the contacts, I, of course, will still stand for such cases to be at your disposal, as well as for other concerns. However, this would be outside of the usual contacts and wouldn't be official thus only for your assistance. Concerning the development of the meditation ring, I want to explain to you that I underwent a whole seven days of toil for this. If Ingrid should be excluded from it then I would have to prepare a new, detailed arrangement. Billy says that's fine, then despite everything, I might expect assistance from you. Quetzal says that is correct, but only strictly in terms of the teachings. Billy says at least something. But now, what if Ingrid and Ferdinand don't show up again on next Saturday? Quetzal says that, then, would be the first misstep for Ferdinand but the last one for Ingrid, which will also then result in her exclusion. But on the other hand, she should finally come to terms with the changed circumstances and recognize that by her own fault, her original determinations are no longer attainable. Billy says that is clear, but what will happen now if she really is pregnant, for in this regard, this was also contrary to your instructions. Quetzal says about this, I must first consult the others because her willful misconduct entitles me not to decide about that anymore. But if she now finally incorporates herself and if she also fixes her serious mistakes then it will probably be such that we will still give the necessary assistance despite everything. Billy says at least something. Quetzal says I will no longer be able to do more. In addition, Ingrid is also subject to everything that I first explained. Billy says so then, you will at least come once again after April 7th. Quetzal says that is correct. Billy says it makes one want to howl the people on earth think that they can reach their goals by hypocrisy, stubbornness, egoism, etc. I've had entirely different experiences. Sfarth once told me that one does not attain any progress and insight if one blasphemes his fellow humans, searches for their mistakes, and blabs about them to others. He taught me that if one wants to learn something, then he must hold his tongue and that one must ensure that he only registers the faults of others if such faults fall directly into the eye, but one must never talk about these. One may only observe, hold his tongue, register and carefully think about this. But this reflection is simply a matter of one seeing the error in another person for the sole purpose of looking within himself to see whether the same error can be seen in him and should be fixed. But whoever talks about the errors of others hurts and betrays them, revealing that he never learns anything. On the contrary, a person who sees errors in others and who speaks of these with third parties is never able to think about the truth and recognize his own errors. Such a person always tries to reshape his fellow man to his own stencil, so he blackmails him, harasses him, argues with him, talks about him behind his back, and all other sorts of evils. But all of this also influences the study of the true teachings, thus the spirit teachings, etc., 
because a person of this lifestyle is simply incapable of concentrating on a truly spiritual study. In addition, because the forces that he wastes with this are missing to him, he directs his attention towards the errors of his neighbor, by what means any power for and any progress towards his own insight and his own evolution are missing. The forces that would be necessary for self-study, the study of spirit teachings, and self-knowledge, etc., are eaten up by his wrong behavior, which consists of harming others, slandering others, falsely observing others, and searching for errors in others. Instead of that person wiping off his dirty feet in front of his own door, he always wipes them in front of the door of another. But of course, everyone maintains that it isn't like this and that someone had been noticeable, as well as defiant, aggressive, and incorrect, to such an extent that one simply couldn't have ignored it. But the fact is that this lame excuse can absolutely be no excuse because it only reveals one's own failure, but nobody ever thinks of that. Everyone always wants to be better than his neighbor because the delusion of self-praise and self-evaluation is greater than any honesty in people. Quetzal your word infallibly is. Billy says you probably expect too much, as is demonstrated by your decision that you really want to break off the contacts now even if it might only be temporary. Quetzal says nevertheless, like you've said, it really is the only possible way that the people can learn the truth. Billy says silence is diamonds and talking is tin. Quetzal says that is correct. There never was a person and there will never be a person who attained a spiritual or material success according to consciousness and, thus, a true evolution by wrong talking. Talking is purely a communicative device, a means for understanding, so this should only be used for this purpose. Billy says yes, Svarth even said this, explaining that language serves only for communication, and the communication contains only everything that is of a harmonious nature, which is why there are human races that only communicate with each other in song-slash-musical form. Quetzal says that is correct. Language is actually harmonious in itself and so, such a thing should also be expressed. In your ranks, you should at least consider being active at times in this form, namely with singing. This should be a duty with you, and you should introduce this, under all circumstances, as soon as possible. Billy says you laugh, but I have already spoken about this several times at meetings and such, but so far, it hasn't borne any fruit yet. Quetzal says it should be made a duty by an ordinal rule because without this harmony, what is required will never be reached. Billy says that's what I've often said in a similar manner, but it has been unsuccessful. There are simply group members who think that this is sectarian or unworthy for them or even childish. Quetzal says such words and thoughts are very sad because even we and still more highly developed humans can't help but be harmoniously active in this form, by what means also our feelings and thoughts etc. become more peaceful, calmer, and also more affectionate. Billy says this, I can vividly imagine especially since I have previously heard you singing rather often together with several others, as well as alone. Quetzal says you should try hard to organize this, as well as the common and soul prayer of the group members in the form of the meditation. Billy says a hot point. Quickly, everything is compressed into sectarianism. Quetzal that were truly equal a crime because in this regard, the group members should be enlightened and oriented. Billy says unfortunately, I'm not so sure of that. But I had yet another issue, namely because of the introduction for the name book. Have you studied it? Quetzal says I think that you wrote it without our help very well. To say more would be superfluous. Here, you can take the draft back. Billy says thanks, but can I ask you something else now concerning your decision to interrupt the contacts? Quetzal says you can do that. Billy says good, thanks. Just a question concerning Ingrid you said that she must be excluded from the group with the next offense. Starting from when should this be valid? Quetzal says as soon as you've made the facts clear to her. 
I'm thinking now that it will probably be good if, despite everything, I come to you again shortly before your next meeting, in order to give you more details about it. Billy says that will probably be good because I don't want there to be any ambiguity. Especially not because of her pregnancy, which should exist with certainty, as you've said, and from which, more troubles can probably arise with Ingrid. Quetzal says that is correct because like very many Taurus-born women, she is also very strongly inclined to self-softness and to self-pity, from which she is subject to fancies and delusions that are injurious to health, which appear in very blatant forms, by what means these people are even able to deceive doctors. It is a fact that is absolutely incomprehensible, of which I even had to complain several weeks ago in another case, which has fortunately led, however, to positive success. It is simply inconceivable that some earthly women, during the early months of pregnancy, behave so inhumanely and even take advantage of their condition in order to neglect their duties and pass themselves off as being sick. Billy says how do your wives behave in relation to this? Quetzal says such deplorable things are unknown to us because our female partners behave quite right psychologically, in reference to a pregnancy. Nevertheless, degeneration, as in the case of Ingrid and in the case that was complained of earlier, appears with the female earth people very often, especially with the Taurus born, because they do not adjust themselves psychologically to the pregnancy and to the progeny in the right manner. In addition, these imaginary symptoms are reinforced when inadvertent pregnancies arise, which then create psychological disturbances out of feelings of guilt. But Ingrid and the preceding case are two facts which far exceed what is bearable in this regard. But the fact that Ferdinand still shows pity to Ingrid is quite out of place. But anyhow, it is true that we know these things very well from our point of view because these things and those hang together so we can show no consideration for her and must act in accordance with the facts. This means that if Ingrid doesn't immediately incorporate herself into the norm and doesn't fulfill her duty towards the group, the group members, the mission, and toward us, then for her, the only consequence can be an exclusion from the core group. But this means, then, that the center must remain closed to her for all future time. I will personally see to it that this is actually done, as well as see to the fact that in the future, other necessary exclusions take place or that only people who have been monitored more closely than what has been the case until now will be accepted into the core group. For these cases, I will carry out my inspection even when the contacts end, in order to inform you of our relevant determinations in each case. Billy says at least something. Quetzal says yes. But this means that for the time being, the core group has to surrender the relevant power of control to me, however, and in spite of everything, I concede to them and must even demand that they have to make profound thoughts of assessment about this. Billy says you mean that this will create better thinking and observation in this regard? Quetzal says that is correct because such can be learned by my decisions. Billy says that's good. Then yet another question what other expectations do you have for the group members, other than those whom you've already mentioned? Quetzal says the aforementioned can be applied to all concerns, including the manual activity of every group member. Also included in this is the order with the work advising, for which Jacobus is exclusively responsible and whose orders are to be obeyed. Nevertheless, if special operations arise, where the necessary tools can be secured by the user then these are to be returned to Jacobus only after the completion of work. The ordinal rule concerning the return of tools to the workshop at the end of a work they can, therefore, only to refer to when tools are used outside. Concerning this, major disagreements and misunderstandings still inexplicably seem to prevail, which should finally be solved through thinking and reason. Furthermore, it is to be expected that the monthly work commitments and financial obligations be kept accurately and punctually, as well as the precise execution of every work, and in every respect, the statutes and regulations apply.
so it is also to be observed that each group member begins his work, etc. at the given time in the morning, even those who reside outside the center and arrive there late at night. But whoever just appears on Saturday, in order then to remain in the center on Sunday or just to leave again after midnight on Saturday, has to take up his work around 1.00 p.m. in the center. The guidelines for this are clearly given and must be kept in every respect. And only under the condition that in all respects, the necessary changes are actually let through and lead to success can we continue our contacts. Billy says the person of the earth simply has too many bad habits, to which he falls again and again. So in each case, it happens that after a lecture, a wave of good results, after which one then reverts to the old and familiar routine. Quetzal says we don't get involved in that except me, and this decision really is final. The High Council warned us at that time, when we decided to take this step, to continue on at our own risk. But we cannot take responsibility for our continuance any longer unless it is proven by the group members that everything has truly found an improvement and a change toward the devotion to duty and so on. If this isn't the case within the set time limit, then we must act in accordance with the advice of the High Council, which says that we can no longer spare any assistance for the Earth people because such is neither accepted nor usefully followed. Billy says and what about the movie, I mean the Hollywood film, because on April 25th, they actually want to come here and shoot the film. Quetzal says the possibility that we could be photographed with our aircraft from a distance must now, under the given circumstances, also be dropped. The relevant advice of the High Council is that if we did this now, then everything would lead to the fact that the offending group members would believe that we would only talk and threaten, but we wouldn't ever actually act. Concerning this, if we would make an exception, then it would be tantamount to admitting the same, that our seriousness can be doubted and further exceptions can be made. But this may not be the case and it will not be the case, because we now remain relentless since we have no other choice. But that should be enough talk now, I also have other tasks to perform. Billy says just one more question will I at least be able to see Semiaza again when she is back? Quetzal says I said that this time, we remain relentless. Private contacts of this kind will cease in the future, and besides, I will be the only person from our ranks who will still remain in contact with you. But only within the framework as I explained to you. The fact that it will be like this in the future is because of you, for you, too have failed to fulfill your duties by disregarding the statutes when you allowed various group members particularly Ingrid and Ferdinand to neglect their commitments. We all realize that you take everything very heavily and hard, much harder than any group member, because through this, you lose the only opportunity to talk with someone who understands your very far-reaching thoughts. And I will also have to limit myself in regards to speaking with you, in reference to the actual teachings. Billy says so, once again, I'm damn alone in this world. Quetzal says unfortunately, yes. Billy says collectivity, I know. But I don't want to pity myself because I know that I've built shit. Bye, my friend, and still greet everyone in love for me. Quetzal says goodbye. Billy says maybe until then, I'll be in the ground or in a wheelchair. Quetzal says I don't understand. Billy says all the same you will understand it later. Bye bye and I am not angry with you. The End